billion dollar checks. A new multi-billion dollar investment. Giant valuation. 80 to 90 billion dollar valuation. And yet to turn a profit. It's the age of generative AI and there's a new big stack in town. Microsoft just made another multi-billion dollar bet on ChatGPT. Amazon making a bet on generative AI, the company confirming it plans to invest up to $4 billion in Anthropic. Google will invest up to $2 billion in the open AI rival Anthropic. This week on Tech Check, Mega Cap's new mega deals. How Microsoft, Google, and Amazon are using their cash hoards to disrupt tech investing and possibly even bankroll themselves. A looming question for investors trying to play the generative AI race, will the incumbent mega caps like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, will they come out on top or will they be surpassed by startups like chatbot creators, OpenAI, and Anthropic? The answer that's emerged over the past year, they're one and the same. And that's because big tech with their money printing cloud units have been staking its claim on both ends of the generative AI race. Really, the people that invest in these companies are mostly the cloud vendors. And the cloud vendors, they have incentives to do that. Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, they are the cloud giants, the so-called hyperscalers. They provide compute power, they invest in AI chips and hardware, and they have also created their own AI services. Today, Microsoft starts selling its most important new product in years, the AI assistant called Copilot. But they've also poured billions of dollars into the biggest names in the AI startup world, effectively replacing what used to be the role of high profile, highly capitalized tech investors like a Tiger Global or SoftBank. Take Microsoft. It arguably kicked off this year of AI hype with an enormous $10 billion investment into ChatGPT maker OpenAI. But that was just the splashiest. It's also poured $1.3 billion into Inflection, which makes a chatbot called Pi, $100 million into Humane, whose futuristic AI pin went viral recently, $250 million into Builder.ai, and $140 million into Typeface. That's just to name a few. The opportunity with its AI investment, I mean, analysts are all jazzed up about this, or investors in terms of the long term. And Google parent Alphabet, not to be outdone, has invested $2.5 billion into OpenAI rival Anthropic, $235 million into Hugging Face, and is reportedly in talks to invest hundreds of millions into Character.ai. Is it an act of desperation on Alphabet's part to try and become a bigger player in the AI game, which some say it's seeded to people like Microsoft? We shall see. Amazon, too, has also gone in big on Anthropic, inking a deal for an investment of up to $4 billion. That's all shaking up the venture capital world and squeezing out the traditionalists who rely on a more disciplined model. I think it's really difficult to be a VC when to invest in an AI startup you have to put hundreds of millions of dollars in because as we said, then you have to scale this massive business to justify it. VC firms, they're unwilling to buy in at such stratospheric valuations because they're trying to maximize their returns. Big tech though, they have giant checkbooks and a special advantage, access to expensive GPU chips through their cloud servers. Here's how Databricks CEO Ali Godsey explains it. So let's say the same $100 million company from five years ago now also probably needs another $200 million just to pay for the GPUs. So then obviously the company has to be worth at least 300 because the company cannot be worth less than the money put in, the money cash that it has on the balance sheet. So, you know, it makes the valuations very, very rich. Another bonus, big tech is willing to buy in at higher valuations because they know that in the end, they'll benefit no matter what. A virtuous cycle, a positive feedback loop, whatever you want to call it, big tech companies might be effectively bankrolling themselves, using their profits to invest billions of dollars into these startups. They take uh, money off the balance sheet, and then they, which doesn't affect their profit and loss statements, and they invest it in as a, you know, equity in these companies. Which comes right back to them in the form of cloud revenue. And that money is earmarked for them to buy GPUs on their cloud. Right? And that becomes revenue. Microsoft pioneered this. In exchange for its initial $1 billion investment into OpenAI, the startup agreed to exclusively train its models on Microsoft's Azure servers. That means spending billions of dollars on the cloud platform. Looking at Microsoft's investments into OpenAI since then, $13 billion in all, makes even more sense. The more money it puts into generative AI models, the more fuel for its all-important cloud business. It's in some sense, you know, money from one pocket to the other. 
Others have since followed suit. When Amazon announced it was investing up to $4 billion into Anthropic, the startup agreed to use Amazon's AWS as its primary cloud service provider and train future AI models on Amazon's proprietary chips. Amazon's uh, making an investment, AWS is making an investment, its biggest ever in an asset that's considered high quality. What wasn't made public though, was that Anthropic also committed to spending $4 billion on Amazon's cloud platform, AWS, according to the Wall Street Journal. So Amazon's investments going out and coming back in as cloud revenue. And unlike Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI, Amazon's wasn't even an exclusive deal. Anthropic has also received investment from Google up to $2 billion, along with a reported commitment to spend more than $3 billion on Google Cloud. So big tech has become both AI startups' biggest backers and their biggest customers. They benefit from selling these GPUs. Uh, you know, they, they'll win anyway. Even if the startup doesn't really succeed, revenue will go up because they're selling GPUs. It explains why it's increasingly difficult for VCs to compete. If a VC wants to write a check, they're buying in at enormous valuations and they can't participate in that virtuous cycle. The deals have some analysts wondering whether they deserve more scrutiny from regulators. This is kind of an acknowledgement by Amazon that they can't do it all organically. So there's a little bit of a defensive element in here. The deals have come from Microsoft and Google themselves, not through their venture capital arms, M12 and GV. And while all out acquisitions of these startups would attract the attention of regulators, big tech has found a way to evade them while reaping nearly all the benefits. Microsoft now owns 49% of OpenAI and has the exclusive cloud partnership. The new buying to some degree is buying 49% of uh, an AI company or a nonprofit. FTC Chair Lena Khan says the mega deals are something the FTC is thinking about, especially if they're structured to sidestep antitrust review. We haven't looked closely enough at all of the investments happening right now to figure out is that what they're designed to do, but it's, it's possible that there may be certain loopholes. It's something that we're thinking about and I think is very timely right now. Although she claims it's timely, one of the main criticisms of regulators is that they're fighting yesterday's battles. And with the speed of these investments, it could mean the winners and losers in this AI race will already be cemented before the FTC even gets a foot in the door. Another scenario could play out. Godsey says today's AI winners could ultimately be the Alta Vistas and the AOLs of the generative AI era. 1999, there was the promise of the internet. It's gonna change absolutely everything. And then everyone who could spell IT would get these crazy valuations. But if you look back in history, it's very rare that those companies that started a new secular shift remained, right? I mean, we don't, Yahoo didn't end up dominating search, right? Alta Vista, we don't even remember it anymore. So it's likely there's gonna be new entrants here and they're gonna become the next kind of behemoths. We don't know just who they are and what they're gonna actually do. Whatever the outcome, the generative AI race is still undisputedly in its early stages and Megacap has a mega role to play. <laughs>